Hey Joe, let me see if I could help with the power ejection uh, question. So I know this picture is going to be a little complex to kind of look at, right? But, um, you know, to, to answer your core question about, you know, the Culp controller, it can support 800 pixels per port, right? So if your strings are, you know, 92 uh, long, then I think that means that we can basically handle eight strands out of one port and we would just daisy chain uh, back and forth for those eight strands, right? Um, and then the, you know, the second port, we would just says, oops, this looks like a typo, I should say data port two, um, would actually come out at strand, you know, strand nine, right? And then kind of continue on, right, to strand 16. Now, <laughs> I'm only showing um, two power supplies. Obviously, you have four to get all the way to 32, right? Uh, but, um, you know, hopefully this kind of gives you an idea. And I didn't draw all the wires. So let me show you. I know this looks really, really complex, right? So let's, let's break it down. So the first thing that I would do is I would start with the um, just the first power supply, your lead power supply. This is the only one that's going to be directly connected to the cult board, right? So um, you would have just a, a, a you know a, a, the twelve volt positive and the twelve volt negative coming directly into the cult board, right? Now <clears throat> there's two schools of thought. You notice that what I drew going into strand one is I am only connecting the uh, twelve volt negative or ground and the data pin. I am not connecting the 12 volt power or plus going to strand one. Instead, I bring that directly from power supply one. You can technically do it on this first one, but where you can't do it is on the second one, because on the second one, you want this to come from power supply two, and you can never connect the positives of two power supplies. You can and should connect the negatives of all four of your power supplies. Just daisy chain them so that you always have a common ground. But you should never connect that. So to avoid any mistakes, what I always do is I only, coming out of my boards or I, coming out of my controllers, I only connect the negative and the data pins. And I never connect the power pins as they go in, right? So um, what this looks like is that I have those coming into this strand and then I would have the power coming directly from power supply one over here, okay? And in order to do this, you could, you, there's two choices you could do. So you can see here that I have a fuse block and a ground block, right? So where I'm just taking these and splitting them off, right? Um, honestly, the easiest thing to do is to buy one of these boards. 15 bucks, very inexpensive, right? And what you can see here is that you bring in your data and your ground from your power supply. It puts the fuses uh, right here. And now I got eight fused ports, which is exactly as it turns out what you would need because you need to have, you know, these connectors going to a number of different strands, right? So this would be actually perfect for you. In fact, you what you need is you really need four, and I'll explain that in a second, right? But because what this one does is this does split both data and ground into both of these and add fuses for 15 bucks, you can't beat this price, right? Um, the other thing that you can do is you could just with these with these fuse blocks, is you could take all of the ground wires and just you know solder them together so they become one wire and going into the power supply no fuse needed there but you should have a fuse on this side and so if you don't want to use one of these but i think that's good you can use an inline fuse like this right um honestly i think in the end this is going to you know be more expensive um to do uh, than it is to just buy one of those 15 things that covers both of these, okay? So talking about power injections, 
I don't know enough about your tees that you bought for exactly how we would wire this. Uh, we would have to look at it carefully. I personally tend not to use those tees. I tend to build my own things. The bottom line, what you can see here is that where I had, you know, ground and data and power coming in here. What we're going to do is this is your strand of 92 that goes and it's going to connect at your bottom of your tree. And then once we get to the strand of the top, what we're basically going to do is just wire these right in for the one that comes down. Right. So you might want to put some type of disconnect here if you want to be able to separate these two strands. Right. But bottom line, it's just, you know, data goes to data, ground goes to ground, power goes to power. Right. And then what that's going to do is that's going to end up bringing, you know, coming around here. By the time we get down here, we have about a hundred and because yours was 192. So, you know, so basically we have just a little bit more than what we could handle in being able to, you know, you start to get if, if that's all our strands were, our power injection wouldn't be enough. So what I do is when I get to end of strand two, I want something where the the data pin just flows directly over out of strand two into strand three. And then what I want is where I have my power coming down here and I want my power to split and go both here and here. And this is very safe because our power pins that were coming in came from that same fuse block. Okay. And so then we can flow the power both directions here, have our data connected. Now, what most people forget is anytime we interject power, we also need to inject ground again so that there's ample path back to the power supply. So again, I have another wire coming in from the ground supply, and this is going to connect both to this strand and to this strand. Okay, so kind of like splitting off and, and teeing it. Now, depending on the tees that you have, maybe it does both of those, right? Because some of them are like that, where the tees are that, you know, um, one of the wires is just a straight pass through on the data, and then the other two are just ground and um, and power. And then we don't connect the data pin anywhere going back. In which case, if yours is like that, then we could use that with one of these T's, and that would work beautifully. Uh, I would just unfortunately have to see the T and put a you know put a meter on it just to make sure we're clear how it works, right? Um, but if that's what you want to do, that that could definitely work. Right. But bottom line, that's the key thing that we want to do is to, you know, make sure that on our first strand is that we bring the negative and the, the data from here and that we bring our fuse block, um, you know, in uh, we sorry, we bring our power in here as well. I would bring it directly from the power supply versus the cult board. OK, so in which case the fuses on the cult board aren't really doing much of anything. It's really the fuses on these that are going to be doing everything because we're doing a lot of power injection. OK, so same thing here. So the power will come in. It'll flow back this way and it'll flow this way. And it's completely fine because they're the same power supply. And, you know, our ground does the same thing. And then we come back here. And again, we just have another loop uh, on this end. And we come down and then same thing. We're going to loop the data over and then we're going to bring more power. We're going to send a little power this way. We're going to send a little power that way. And we're going to tie our grounds together so everything is grounded and we have the extra path that we need back to the power supply. So that just kind of continues. I didn't draw all the things. So it was going to get complicated up until the end of, you know, strand eight. So strand nine is obviously where we're going to have to do something different. You don't want anything connecting strand eight to strand nine directly because these are going to be two different power supplies here okay so now here's the trick i i learned this the hard way you'll notice on this one that i have two different grounds coming here i have a ground from the you know from the cult board or a negative coming from the cult board and i have a negative coming from the power supply in reality this should not be necessary because you know you have a common ground here but because there's a lot of wire, I have found that if you don't do this, when you have a slightly different power supply on here and that's powering this, which is this one is directly connected here and a slightly different power supply here, that you risk having a, a, a very minor voltage difference in ground, which causes the lights to flicker. 
So I have always found that I want to bring two grounds, one directly from the cult board, one directly from uh, the second power supply, even though they're connected here, which you should always connect these with a nice solid uh, ground, right? And then I just bring in the data from my second port, as long as the power now from my, you know, from my new power supply. So I have a completely different one of these uh, fuse blocks that we were just looking at here, right? And so now what I could do is that it's really the same thing again. I don't didn't draw it, but you know, I just kind of would loop back here. And then as we kind of came down back this path, I would again want to power inject here. And then we'd have more loops in here until we got to 16, right? And then we would repeat the same thing for power supplies three and four. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Very happy to meet in person and we can try to hack this out.